So I haven't done a video like this in a good amount of time, and it mostly was because of the holiday season as well as all the PEA stuff that was going on. And of course, we just had the major, and so all those things kind of piled up against each other, which kind of kept me away from doing vlogs like this. But I did want to kind of get back to some news that was released before all that stuff did happen. And of course, one of those things that was going on before all the drama and holidays and such was the fact that Energy had put together a new CSGO lineup for 2017. Of course, what happened was, is Tabson, Leggett, and Gabi left the team, went back to Germany and started a team known as Big Clan, and they picked up Nex and Kiev, and of course we saw them at DreamHap Leipzig, had that second place finish, and a pretty neat little run there at that tournament. But the two players from Energy that were left behind, Fugly and Peter, actually got a hold of Daps, of course the former in-game leader for Optic and Conquest, as well as, of course, Liquid back in the day as well. And with Daps in position as the leader of the team, they also were able to pick up Marky and Breezy to round out the five for this team. So I kind of want to take a look at this new lineup and just kind of give my thoughts about it. Now, of course, Energy had a rough time with their original lineup, right? I mean, they did well enough online to qualify for the EPL Season 4 Finals, of course. Uh, however, in ECS, they didn't do really hot at all. In fact, they really struggled in that league. Then when they went offline, they also really struggled. I think they played around 25 maps offline, if I'm not mistaken, and they only won five of those maps, and all five maps they won were, in fact, against CLG. Now, at Toronto, they ultimately lost to CLG in a best of three in the group stages to be eliminated, I believe, but then at Montreal, they actually did beat... Uh, CLG and Investor 3 there, but still were unable to progress from the group stages. Uh, we also saw them at many times have very close games against high-level competition, particularly that E-League Season 1 when they first got Tabson uh, and company on board. But also, they had a couple of close games with the EPL Season 4 finals as well, but they could never really find victory. So the offline showings weren't really there. And so you could definitely tell that things weren't working out. And it's certainly understandable why people parted ways and went in different directions and to try to pursue different things for the future. But let's take a look at this new lineup that they have now. Of course, there's not much to read into because we haven't really seen them play too much yet. In fact, the only thing I think that the full five of Energy have participated in thus far was the IEM Katowice qualifiers from the North American side of things where they got absolutely dumpstered by CLG. It was really poor. Like the only won seven rounds between two maps or something like that. Granted, I will add the caveat that they haven't been together that long because of course we had Marky and Breezy both go to WESG. Marky was playing with his old team Quetzal. And uh, of course, Breezy was actually still playing for Selfless, his former team that he had left to join Energy. But they already were kind of planning on using him for WESG. They didn't really have a replacement for him yet. So there was some kind of agreement between Energy and Selfless to allow Breezy to actually go to China to play in WESG. And so because two of their players were missing uh, to play at that event and other things going on like the holidays and such, I don't know that they've really had a whole lot of time to really get together and practice with their full five and so I don't want to read too much of that kind of to result but certainly it wasn't a great debut but hopefully with more time and preparation will uh, allow them to sort some things out and be ready to go as I think the next thing they're really going to be competing in is going to be you know EPL which is going to start I guess in a few weeks I know it starts at some point in February uh, so sometime shortly after I finish recording this video I think you will see EPL be in the pickup and so that's when we were going to see them play a little bit more regularly but taking a look at the lineup, uh, player to player, first of all, we'll look at the two players that remain from the previous lineup, which is going to be Peter and Fugly. Now, Peter is an opera that at times could have a pretty substantial impact and at times uh, could put up pretty solid numbers. In fact, outside of Tabson, uh, which I think Tabson was by far the best player in energy for his entire time that he was on the team and the most consistent player and the one you could really seem to rely on. The only one I really felt you could rely on on a regular basis, to be quite honest. Um, I think that Peter was the other guy that at times could put up pretty big numbers. And like I said, even if his numbers weren't good overall, like maybe if he even went slightly negative, he could still have some huge impact rounds or some big picks to try to open things up. 
But I will say that in recent times, his performances were kind of a mixed bag. I felt like I could see games where he would do quite well, but then there were other games where he was kind of completely missing, and there was a couple of games that were in between. The point is, is he didn't really seem to show the same potential that I used to see from him back when he used to play on CLG. Everyone remembers that big game he had at Aspen against LDLC, for example, where he looked super sharp. And so you could kind of see hints of brilliance there, but... It just he, that never really got followed up upon, I felt like. He never really did see him settle into being one of the best operas in North American region. Like, there was a bunch of names that seemed to always come above him, like a Skadoodle, like a JDM, uh, maybe even a Shazam, and just some of the other operas out there, like when people had their eyes on Kusta, for example, or just different guys like that. It always seemed like Peter never really rose up the ranks a whole lot. I mean, there were times where he looked like maybe he could contend up there in the rankings, but again, it just seems like a mixed bag from him towards the end of energy and maybe it's because things weren't going well and you know there was chemistry issues or different things like that i'd certainly heard that there was issues like that going on like inner team turmoil and so to speak but you know all i can go off of is what i see on the server and matches and again it just seemed like to me it was kind of like 60 40 almost like 60 percent of the time the 65 percent of the time he looked like he was doing pretty well but then there was another good you know maybe 30 to 40 percent of the time where he didn't seem to be playing so well and so i'll be curious to see how that changes under dap's leadership if that was able to find a way to settle them in more or get more out of him or set him up to succeed better you know those are things to be keeping an eye on fugly similar kind of story also seems like kind of a mixed bag at times i felt like he had a really high skill ceiling really good aim i remember back when he was on liquid before hiko joined this goes back into I don't know, I guess like middle 2015 kind of time period. I felt like at that time he did show a lot of promise, but then when Hiko came onto Liquid, it almost felt like he kind of got put in like a weird role or maybe not a role he wanted to be in anymore, maybe lost some of the spots he liked to play. And he kind of fizzled out and then he joined CLG and his time on that team was... It just didn't seem like it really clicked well for him there either. And then on energy, again, just kind of the same story. Uh, and I just feel like you see more bad than good from Fugly. Like at times, again, he looks kind of sharp. His aim looks kind of crisp. And you start to hope that maybe he's going to put something together. But when you look at his numbers overall and you look at his overall performances in leagues and tournaments and such, it just isn't really there. Uh, and so this is another guy that I think that Dats is really going to have to, have to kind of take a look at and hope that he can... Maybe find a way to get Fugly more comfortable. Maybe it's a situation kind of like NAF where it takes, uh, you know, the guy to get into a comfort zone in a role he's really comfortable with and surrounded by teammates he likes playing with. It, like all these particular things to get him to where he needs to be to perform. So maybe Daps can try to do something there as well. But point is, is that when you look at Peter and, and Fugly coming into this team, you look at their, their recent track record, there, there's a lot left to be desired, I feel like. And so <clears throat> I think that that really does have his work cut out for him uh, trying to figure out how to sort things out. Uh, you look at the two the two new kind of guys on the team that are coming in as far as like young players, like these are the guys who are around 18 years old or so that uh, are, are like up and coming talents that people hope for. Uh, Breezy, I'm particularly impressed by. I thought he looked really sharp in some of the offline play I saw him uh, do on Selfless, uh, and as well as whenever he played League play with them. I thought he looked really good. I think he's one of the upcoming entry fraggers in North American CSGO. I, I am really impressed by him. In fact, I was kind of under the impression that if he would have held out for a bit longer, depending on how things went with some of these other lines, that he might be a candidate for some of the other like real top teams in the North American scene. Maybe someone gives him a chance, like in a tryout or something, he impresses him, he winds up being on like one of the big name teams in, in the North American Team. So I almost kind of wonder if maybe Breezy made a bit of a mistake, like maybe he could have waited things out and, and got maybe a better team than this. Uh, I just, I don't know, just from watching him play from an eye test, even looking at some of his numbers, it just looks like he certainly has some potential. I think he's definitely one of the names to keep an eye on going forward. You know, obviously... We, we've had youth come up in the NA scene recently, you know, Stewie 2K, Automatic really kind of came out on Cloud9. People had their eyes on guys like Sick and Twist who are on Misfits. You know, those are certainly some names that you definitely want to keep an eye on. But I really do think that 
Breezy is kind of one of these other riflers that could wind up being something. Um, so I think that Energy made a good move by picking him up. Uh, it's just going to be about whether or not there's enough support structure around Breezy uh, to to give him something to work with so he can be a successful player to, like leading a team like this. Because uh, I think he is going to be kind of the carry for the team, in my opinion. I think he will be probably their best player and the one I expect to put up the biggest numbers on a regular basis. And I hope this works out and I hope this, this team either works out or this becomes a stepping stone for Breezy because uh, I feel like there is some potential there, but only time will tell is the famous phrase and it certainly applies here as well. Uh, the other player is going to be Marky, who I don't really know too much about. Uh, he's also quite young. He's 18 years old. He's only really played on a team called Quetzal, which kind of played in like ESCA main, maybe ESCA premier level. Uh, he also went to a couple of lands. He was at WSG with Quetzal, where he put up some pretty good numbers against Selfless, but then he also kind of struggled against like the Ukrainian team and some other teams there. So his, his numbers were kind of a mixed bag at that event. Um, but I always hear good things about him. Obviously, he got a lot of notoriety from playing in Rank S, and so people were seeing him on, on some of the different people who stream Rank S matches in the North American scene. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, maybe he's like a young gun that can can be impressive. And then Dats, obviously, talked about him a bit as being this in-game leader who came you know, from Optic and Conquest and Liquid and all that stuff. I actually think Dats is a good in-game leader. I think he did a great job kind of building up optic from when they were conquest to optic he was obviously really key in scouting and recruiting mixwell which was a great pickup for that team so he definitely has an eye for talent uh, he certainly seems to be able to mold together a good team i mean he took a lineup of players that were maybe even seen as rejects from some of the other top teams because they were either kicked from uh, other teams or they weren't necessarily picked up by some of the other top teams and he took those guys and he built them into what is now the best team in north america granted that happened after he was already gone but the foundation was really already set in place by daps i mean some of the roles that players played some of the defaults that they used uh some of the even the executes that he put together uh you know the way he kind of set up rush as this entry fragger that he paired up with um well, well now with Tarek, but different guys who was able to pair up with rush to kind of get like an entry force going like i said finding a guy like mixwell being able to use him in a hybrid capacity you could certainly see there was some good leadership attributes there from Daps. And so I, I definitely think in an era now where in-game leaders are so much more important because coaching got nerfed that he's certainly one of the in-game leaders to keep an eye on. Certainly Stanislaw came out of that situation looking like one of the uh, one of the best in-game leaders in NA as well. So we're starting to see these in-game leaders come up. Like obviously Sean Gares is like the classic one, the one that's been around forever. And then some of our other in-game leaders were, of course, banned. And people were looking to see what other kind of in, in, NA in-game leaders could come up. And Daps is one of those guys, along with a guy like Stanislaw. Law. And we're kind of keeping our eyes out to see who else is going to be able to do that, as Liquid certainly still struggling in that capacity, it seems. Cloud9 have had their struggles in that capacity, kind of putting a lot of trust on Stewie to do that while also trying to be like a big playmaker. It'd be too much responsibility for him to handle consistently. Don't want to get too off topic. But again, I have a lot of respect for Daps. I think he's a good in-game leader. I think he's certainly of value to a team uh, that's trying to be, you know, one of the top guys in the NA scene. I mean, he could obviously have value as a coach as well for maybe like one of the elite NA teams. But I think on a team like this, you, you, I mean, they made good pickups on energy to get, I think, Breezy and that Sparky. I'm not really sure. I feel like that's kind of a dice roll. Like, either he's going to turn out to be a good player or he's not. And you're going to have to kind of, you know, look somewhere else is kind of the, the situation I think energy is going to find themselves in. My conclusion really is that... I think the only way this team winds up being good is if this breezy marky combo winds up working together well and winds up really being good. Like those are going to be the two players that this team is going to have to rely on to be successful, in my opinion. Those are going to be the skilled players that you're going to have to see put up substantial numbers in and out on a daily basis to allow this team to compete with some of the other teams in the North American scene. Um, Breezy, I think, can do that. Marky, I have no clue. You know, I just haven't seen him against, you know, top competition on a regular basis or playing within a professional level team on a regular basis. There, there's a lot of questions to be answered there. Uh, it's also going to be about whether or not Daps can find a way to unlock Fugly and actually get him performing on a consistent level. Same with Peter. Can he get him back on track to being like this promising North American opera? There's a lot of things that Daps is going to have to piece together and sort out to make this team successful. But I think that if this duo of Marky and Breezy can be good, I think this team could be dangerous. I think they could be 
you know, like a middle of the pack North American team. If you're in an EPL where there's six playoff spots, you know, likely teams like SK and Immortals are going to be always up towards the top. Optics certainly look like they're going to be up there. Uh, this Misfits team, you know, let's see what they can do. They have some young talent and veteran leadership in Sean Gares. Um, you still have teams like Cloud9 and Team Liquid who are going to be up there. But, you know, maybe a team like Energy could be like a 7th, 8th place team in an EPL. Maybe they do challenge for that 6th spot for playoffs or something like that. Um, those are kind of the, the, that's kind of the point I see Energy probably being at. Unless, like, Breezy and Marky are just, like, god-tier level players and they just, like, super hard carry and, and, and like, Peter wakes up and gets super consistent. Like, if, if everything goes amazingly, you know, maybe this team does a little bit more than that. But that's kind of where I see them at. I don't think they're going to be a bottom-of-the-barrel North American team. I think they'll be more towards the middle and, like I said, maybe challenging for, like, a sixth spot. Um, I mean, that, that is probably like best case scenario, in my opinion, uh, a little bit unique part of this video is I actually did a bit of an interview with Daps and I actually asked him some questions about the team to kind of get his take on things as all this has been kind of my own opinion. And so I kind of wanted to share that with you, um, just, you know, because I'm sure you guys would, would like to hear that. So. I asked Daps, first of all, just like, you know, how does it feel to be back in an in-game leader position in the post-optic era of your career? What do you think you can do? How, you know, how, how does it feel to be back, basically? And he says it felt good to be back on a team leading again, but that he felt the break was definitely necessary. Um, kind of allow him to do a mental reset, kind of rethink things out, uh, kind of get maybe a fresh look on things, basically. Then I asked him what made him decide to go with energy, and he basically told me that the roster was the reason I chose to join energy. So it seems like he's very confident in this team. Uh, again, I think it makes sense to be confident about Breezy. I think you see a lot in him. You know, um, I know Daps has a history of playing with Fugly, and, and from talking to Daps, Daps feels like, you know, he can maybe help Fugly out. And we're going to get to these questions, actually, because the next question I actually asked is, I to ask Daps, what can you tell me about Marky? What do you see in him, and how key do you think he is for your team? And he basically says that Marky is a highly skilled player with no previous experience on a professional team. I see that he has potential to be a really good player as long as he wants to learn and improve, which it seems as he does. He is just as key to the team as everyone else on it. If everyone does their role job correctly, it'll work out. Then I said, you know, and asked him, Fugly has often had struggles this year as a player, oftentimes having equal amounts of good and bad games. What do you think, why do you think that is, and what do you think you and the current lineup can do to help Fugly along? And he basically told me that Fugly used to be one of the best up-and-coming players in NA back when I played with him on Denial and Liquid. As to why his performance has dropped can be attributed to many things, and it's more his place to say that. I think playing with a full NA lineup again will help him. And so I think basically from this and from talking to the Daps on other occasions, he, he always just kind of brought up how he didn't think Fugly ever got comfortable and these other teams ever really got maybe a role he wanted to play or maybe the, just the environment wasn't good for him. Different things like that is kind of what he chalked up, you know, Fugly's kind of fall off from. And it seems like he's confident that he can build a better environment for Fugly and hopefully get more out of him as a player. Then I kind of asked that, you know, how do you see the role shaping up on this team? Is there any type of approach or style you'd like to focus on? I know in the past, Optic had a pretty balanced game plan of default uh, to mid-round reads and executes, and then being able to change the pace when necessary, and the meta has moved this way in general. Will your team be similar on energy? He said, I feel the roles on this team will be a lot better defined than they were on Optic, since I now have a full-time opper and no real hybrids on the team. So I feel that will be a positive early on. The game plan may be similar to what I used to call, you know, referring to Optic, but I will have to change my approach in some way, which is yet to be determined. Then I said to him, where do you realistically see this team at starting out and where do you think it can go? And his assessment was, I feel there is a lot of individual skill in this team, which will help at the start when we are less coordinated, but if everyone puts in time and is willing to learn and play well, then I feel this five has a lot of potential, but it's way too early to tell where it will be in six to 12 months. So it seems like it's a long-term project that he is invested in. And so that's kind of my take on the new energy lineup. That's Daps' own words about the energy lineup. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please follow subscribe for more content. See you next time.